Today, we're headed to the Imperial dealership to grab some brochures and take a brief look at the new 1956 Imperial Luxury Cars. If this is something you're interested in, then come along for the ride and let's kick the tires together. Hi, we're Charge Ins Retro Cars. Welcome to our channel. Sit back with us and take a stroll down memory lane. It would be impossible to talk about the 1956 Imperial without the mention of Virgil Exner. Virgil Exner came to Chrysler in 1949, where he joined Chrysler's Advanced Styling Group. At that time, the Chrysler vehicles were being fashioned by engineers instead of designers. Exner imparted the forward look design program. Exner adopted tail fins as a central element of his vehicle designs. He believed in the aerodynamic benefit of the fins and even used wind tunnel testing at the University of Michigan. But he also liked their visual effects on the car. Exner lowered the roof line and made the car sleeker, smoother, and more aggressive looking. In 1955, with a long hood and short deck, the wedge-like design Exner incorporated into Chrysler designs had Ford and GM scrambling, trying to play catch-up by 1957. From 1955 through 1975, the Imperial automobile was Chrysler's masterpiece. The Imperial name had been used by Chrysler since the 1920s, serving as its luxurious model. The Chrysler Imperial was a top-of-the-line luxury car, enough to separate it as a Mark minus Chrysler branding from 1955 to 1983. It was in 1956 that the Imperial carried the world's first all-transistor radio at a grand cost of $150 and this equals $1,648 in 2023. Luxury has a price, and it isn't cheap. While doing the research on this innovative 1956 Imperial luxury car, I found an interesting article from Automotive Industries that was written in October of 1955. This article is very informative and covers more ground with fewer words than I could do. So, on to the article. Featuring a new firepower engine which delivers 280 horsepower, the 56 Imperials are 5.5 inch lo longer than the models of last year with a wheelbase of 133 inches. A wider choice of body models is available with the introduction of a new four-door hardtop which features a full sedan body, full sedan roof, full rear headroom and legroom, full width rear entrance space, and full side vision for rear passengers. In addition to an improved power flight transmission standard on all Imperials, the automobile features as standard equipment a four-way power seat, power window lifts, variable speed electric windshield wipers, automatic interior lights, torsion bar deck lid counterbalance, and a new self-regulating electric mechanical clock, which automatically compensates for its own error every time it is set. Push-button drive is featured on all cars located to the left of the steering wheel column. The four push buttons are arranged on a small panel and have an automatic lockout to prevent accidentally changing to reverse range at over 10 miles per hour. Imperial's trademark, it's a gun sight taillights are mounted above the rear fenders backup lights, outer bumper extensions, and the gas filler door are blended integrally into the rear edge of the fenders. The high rising line of the rear fenders is accented by contrast with the slim 
tapering molding, which starts at the backup light and extends forward along the full length of the car. The Imperial's hemispherical combustion chamber firepower V8 engine has greater power and torque for 1956. Compression ratio has been raised to 9 to 1. Displacement has been increased to 354 cubic inches by enlarging the bore to 3.94 inches for 280 horsepower at 4,600 RPM. Stroke is 3.63 inches. New charge cooled spark plugs are used. In order to provide a full-sized, fully opening rear door window, it is made in two sections. As the regulator is operated, the rear section folds forward just inside the larger forward section, which moves straight down. Both sections are operated by a single regulator. Offered as optional equipment is a new aircraft type gasoline heater, which uses a separate fuel pump and ignition system. It provides air at 100 degrees within 15 seconds after turning it on. The conventional type heater is also available. A new door latch features interlocking pieces of heavy gauge steel which bind the doors and body together. The danger of doors flying open upon impact is said to be virtually eliminated by the new latch. A new 12 volt electrical system will be used on the 1956 cars. In addition to new windshield wipers, which clean 10% more window area than last year's models, Imperial features a new modified Hotchkiss drive, improved sealed beam headlights, and on the crown Imperial, a new search tuning transistor radio which is claimed to use only 10% as much battery current as conventional tube sets. Completely new in design, a high-performance vacuum-operated power brake is standard equipment for 1956. The new power brake operates in conjunction with the all-new center plane brake unit. The power brakes reduce pedal effort by 25%. An exclusive Chrysler Corp feature available on 1956 Imperial cars is the record player, which provides up to 45 minutes of uninterrupted music from each side of special 7-inch records. The record player has been especially developed for Chrysler by Columbia Broadcasting System Laboratories. The player was built by CBS Columbia, the service manufacturing division of CV CBS, the records of which six are furnished with each installation are pressed especially for Chrysler by Columbia Records. A special group of 35 new records is available for use with the, with the new device. The 1956 Imperial has changed styling, new power, and all the other new features offered in other Chrysler Corporation cars, plus those controversial taillights perched up on the fin-like rear fenders. This taillight treat was borrowed from the experimental K310 when Chrysler separated the Imperial and Chrysler lines and adapted to the Imperial as its most striking single identity feature. They have served to draw a lot of attention to the cars and certainly make it easy to spot an Imperial. Reaction to them has been mixed, to say the least, but even those who have criticized them will probably agree that the treatment this year is improved over 1955. Front end changes on the Imperial are fewer than on other Chrysler models, not surprising in view of the fact that this is a much lower production car. Lights are more deeply hooded, however. Rear fenders have been giving the sweeping fin-like look similar to Chrysler models. The fact that the tail light is mounted on top of the fender changes the fender appearance from the Chrysler Windsor and New Yorker models. Very full wheel well openings, another feature used in the K310 continue 
as another identifying mark of the Imperial. This is a big car of fact evidenced by its 130 inch wheelbase and it looks it. However, the styling changes for 1956 while continuing even emphasizing this big look have given it a more agile appearance. This term is used in a relative fashion since it's hard to make a car of this size look like a Greyhound. The Imperial now seems to have smoother, cleaner flowing lines than it did in 1955. Mechanically, the Hotchkiss drive setup has been reworked to cut down on sway. In addition, the disc brakes have been dropped in favor of the conventional drum and shoe brakes used on other Chrysler cars. Cost was probably one factor. Another interesting story heard around Detroit is that engineers originally designed the Imperial's disc brakes with extensive use of aluminum in mind. When they went into production, however, cast iron was substituted. At any rate, it's claimed that the new floating shoe center plane brakes will do everything the disc did. Push button shifting all the various power equipment items, brakes, seat, windows, steering, etc., are available in the Imperial with air conditioning, the transistor radio, high fidelity record player, and other optional items. The same safety features, such as new door latches as offered in other Chrysler lines, are off also offered in the Imperial. Definitely designed for the upper bracket market, the Imperial will be involved in a competitive battle as rugged on a smaller scale as that in the low price field. It will have great appeal for those who are loyal Chrysler Corporation fans, those who know they get good, solid engineering and just about as comfortable a car as you can find from Chrysler. The fact that you now get a bonus in styling is just an added dividend. The Imperial is one of the few cars that look like it should have a uniform chauffeur driving it, and a great many of them do. Well, that brings us to the end of that article. Let's move on over to pricing and production. But first, let's check out some 1956 averages. The average car cost was $2,050, which is 22,513 in 2023. The average household income was $4,450, which equals $48,870 in 2023. The average home cost $11,700, which is $128,490 in 2023. The average gallon of gas, 22 cents. One dollar in 1956 is equal to $10.99 in 2023. Imperial Pricing and Production 1956 Imperial Two-Door Hardtop Production 2094 The price was $5,094 which equals 56,011 in 2023. 56 Imperial four-door hardtop production was 1,543. The price was 5,225, which equals 57,451 in 2023. The Imperial four-door sedan production was 6,821. The price was 4832 which equals $53,130 in 2023. With the forward look design program in place at Chrysler, this forced other automakers to push the design envelope. In the era of big fins, the big three all got on board and produced some of the most memorable cars in American history. 
Thanks for sticking around to the end. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the 1956 Imperial model lineup. Stay tuned, subscribe, and click the bell icon to know when we have more videos in the future where we will look back at other great American cars and trucks.